welcome James to uh thanks for coming on the podcast mate that's my Great. absolute pleasure I'm yeah. I'm honored it's a joy to be here thank you for uh, inviting me yeah good good you're my first guest as well mate, what a, what a, what a privilege do you know I think the thing that fascinated me about your story when we met was how there were so many similarities in our lives but we'd also lived completely different lives and I think it could be a real eye opener for people watching this if sort of you could just tell us take us right back to the beginning sure. what life was like for you and all of that sort yeah, of stuff yeah i mean it's, it's interesting you say that because we are i mean from from different worlds effectively but have mm. but have in a way done the gone along the same the same journey albeit mm. you know, it's all relative but mm. um i i fully admit i was I'm very fortunate as a as a youngster grew up in a in a loving loving family two parents who, who loved each other very much and would have done anything for for myself and, and my younger brother um dad worked incredibly hard from a from, you know left school at a young age but worked his way up through the the banking world um was was, was successful not you know, sort of crazy crazy rich but enough did well enough to put my my brother and, and myself through a through a very good school um and we, was, we was never uh, private school it was private yeah, yeah. school yeah. yeah um and so we never really wanted for, for a great deal mm-hmm. um and gro- growing up i i was a i suppose what you, what you call an, an achieve an achiever um I, I captained this sports team and that sports team and was musical and academic and and did well and, and was constantly getting the praise from two proud parents mm. um and and then I never really sort of struggled to get through grades and and and, and things like that. And and but you, it does make you. If you're looking back, it does make you think. You're throughout your life. You're sort of pushed through this this journey mm-hmm. of of what success is. You know this perception of success. It's you know go and go and get good grades at school and then mm-hmm. go and go to uni- university and get a good job and get get a good, mm-hmm. um, get a family, buy a house, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting how that that success directs you. We'll perhaps come on to this a little bit later in terms yeah. of what success means for different people. Mm. Um, but I, yeah, I I, I did well, and, and as I say, was constantly being being praised for my my achievements, and and it, it gave me this sense of, I suppose, in, invincibility mm. in a way. Was um, you the eldest? So you had one brother. Yeah, so really young, young. Yeah, I've got a younger brother. Yeah, yeah. okay, so you're the so eldest. I was, I was the eldest. <coughs> of so there's sometimes a, a bit more pressure there as well because mm. you're the eldest about wanting to like set an example as well. Was uh, there a bit of that as well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I did well, and my, um, my, my brother sort of. I, I mean, I, I feel sorry for him in a, in a way in that he had that sort of shadow in which to which to follow. Mm. Um, and he, he and I, are very, very different. Um, he he wasn't in, in terribly into sports, and and so we've never nec- never been terribly competitive. You know, there's a um, there can, you can be a lot of competition and and, and um, combativeness between between brothers mm. uh, if you're too similar. But we so we never really fought, mm-hmm. um, uh, and actually have a very very good relationship as a result of that. Um, but yeah, I d- I, he he did have to sort of follow in that. Um, it sounds a bit lame now, but that sort of shadow of of success. Yeah. Um, and I was put up on this pedestal by by my parents and teachers and, and, and things like that. As I say, it gave me this sort of sense of I can achieve whatever I want. And I, I, I went through probably the first sort of twenty five years of my life without ever having any setbacks. Right. Yeah, so it all came. Um, I don't want this to sound big headed, but it all came fairly easily. To yeah. me. But it was because of that, my you know, my my upbringing, I was put on that put on that path. Yeah. Um, so your parents by, done by a great two, job. By basically. two loving parents, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm you know eternally eternally grateful to mm. to them for that. Yeah. Um. <coughs> so I've, I, I, again, get good grades. Got good grades. Go to a good university. Off I went. Good university. Um. And it was then that uh, that sort of freedom kicked in. And, you know, you sort of you, you're away from away from you know the restraints of, of of parenthood and living with living with mum and dad. And you go off and you you spend three years surrounded by effectively similar-minded people, all yeah. of whom have got a bit of expendable cash from mummy and daddy. And you spend that 
you spend basically spend mummy and dad, daddy's cash <laughs> getting as drunk as you possibly can for three years and it's all it's all perfectly acceptable um what and uni so, was it you went to so i went to durham university okay um studied classics which was a complete waste of time <laughs> um <laughs> involved five hours of lectures a week most of which i didn't go to because i was too busy drinking or playing <laughs> rugby or running the college bar or nice whatever it is students <laughs> get up to um and in that in that setting where it's acceptable to go and be shit face mm. um and it's banter and it's fun there's there's it's very difficult to gauge the level of acceptability as to you know and where the where the limit is if you mm-hmm. pass out or you vomit, it's always it's hilarious, isn't mm. it? Oh, James is oh, such a lad, kind of. And there's this mentality of that sort of alpha male. Mm. Um, and that is very, very relatable into uh, many, many years I spent playing rugby yeah. as well. This ultra manly sport where it's all about bravado and um, being the, the biggest and the, the, the strongest and sort of proving yourself to, to others. Mm. Um, when it it should, I mean, the, rugby's a fascinating, fascinating sport. Um, we talk on the the morning of the Rugby World Cup, so it's uh, it's relevant. Yeah, that's right. Um, <coughs> in that the, the the bonds made between players, it's a very sort of brotherly kind of. Um, it's a bit like the time yeah. we spent on SAS. You spend time mm. in this highly pressurized situation, putting your body on the line taking an absolute battering for for 80 minutes be- beating seven bells out of each other and you you form a, a closeness as a result of that with your with your teammates mm. and a respect as well for for your teammates and and for the for the opposition which means that come 80 minutes when the final bell final whistle goes you've spent you've spent the time beating the shit out of each other mm. you want to celebrate that achievement and you want to basically you get on the beers yeah. It's a it's a team bonding on the pitch and a team bonding after the pitch. Yeah. And the culture is very much who can who can drink the most who's the biggest who's the, 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 the biggest lad who can down the most pints and it, I mean even the, the even the man of the match mm-hmm. was awarded a awarded, I say, you know, use that term very loosely. Yeah. A pint to down. You, know, you down a pint if you're <coughs> the man of the match and there's right. you know, it's many, many, many beers and, mm. and drinking games and shots and, and coming on to women and, and it's all if if you came into a pub for a quiet drink on a Saturday evening and my myself and my teammates were in the corner being raucous, you'd probably do a U turn and walk straight back out. Yeah, right. But you know, we didn't care who we upset. It was all, as I say, it was all bravado and banter. Mm. Uh, and again, it's, it's very difficult to gauge that level of what's what's acceptable mm. behaviour in society's terms. Yeah, of course. Being drunk and vomiting and being inappropriate. And um, was there a bit of you during that that felt like you wanted to do something differently, but because it was you had such a close bond with all them guys, you you felt like you couldn't go against the grain. Probably, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, you sort of—I suppose it's a case of being a shepherd or a sheep, isn't it? Very yeah. much, you know. You're drawn into this mentality of "I must prove myself." Mm. When but it's tough, isn't it? When, when, when there's a group of guys and you're all that close, and you're all sort of doing the same thing, you're doing the same thing on the pitch. It's mm. almost like a rule. You you just you just together and you do the same thing off the yeah, pitch. Yeah, and and it it comes down to again it comes down to acceptance when it should be it should be the case that you can be accepted for being a, f- a great player putting in a great performance on the pitch mm. unfortunately there's a there's a mentality that you have to prove yourself off the pitch mm. to be accepted as well when yeah. when you really don't mm. because I, mean, I, I haven't drunk for 3 years now and I'm still great friends with the guys I used to play rugby with yeah. they accept it well done by the way thank mate. you very much massive thank massive you. achievement three, three and a half three and a half, three and a half years mate so. solid um so but yeah at the time <coughs> you think, oh, i must i must prove myself i must be accepted mm-hmm. i must be accepted as a social member of the team as well as and you know i must yeah. drink more than than everyone else etc etc um and because i'm a big guy i was i'm 15 stone now but i was close on 17 when i was, was playing rugby i could drink and drink and drink and there was just no no stopping mm-hmm. and you combine that with um what i 
I mean, it's probably probably a well known phrase, an off switch. Yeah, I, I never have. I've never had it. Yeah. I, the vast majority of people, when they when they drink, they will have however many it is, four, five, whatever, it is, and think, okay, a little bit tipsy here. I'm just gonna back off slightly. Mm-hmm. I I I go into I go up a gear. Yeah, right. I get to that point, and I I think this is absolutely brilliant. I'm gonna have twice <laughs> twice as many. Mm. Um, I've never had that reflex of of being able to realise mm. okay, enough's enough. Yeah. Um, was there anyone in your life at that time who sort of pointed that out to you, or was everyone in that team just no, like doing the same thing? That's the trouble: is that it was acceptable, and everyone was doing the same kind of thing. It right. was it was very much a group wolf yeah. pack kind of. Yeah. So you're even like sort of praised, so you're all, you're praised being, more. You're being, for you're being egged it. on. Yeah, Absol- yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting, very interesting how the how the, the, the sort of the group setting facilitates it uh, as well mm. uh, and when you're young and and you can do this and you can you know get up and um the next morning with you know it's feeling a bit woolly but actually you're able to sort of go about your, your day-to-day business yeah, yeah it's, right. it's doable you get older and older and the hangovers get worse and worse and, yeah. and it starts to start to eat away you did it did it have we got a photo of the rugby can we get a photo of him there we go. That's uh, is that the day. is that at uni or is that? So no, that's <coughs> club rugby. So that's a team called Tunbridge Wells Rugby Club. So that's where you went um, to after that, uni. So I, I had played with them for them as a junior. Yeah, uh, as a sort of young young lad. Um, I I did a year between um, school and university. Played a bit played a bit for for them during that year before going abroad. Yeah, went off to uni for three years. Came back and, right, okay. and started playing for for Tunbridge Wells again. Wow. Um, so that, I guess they're a pretty they they were good they were all right side, yeah. my, the, uh, the last last year of my career i actually um did a slightly treacherous thing and, and went and hopped over to the local rivals who were um, national league level so semi semi professional effectively i was being paid a little bit of a little bit of cash um, right, okay. beer, beer money effectively <laughs> for my uh, so for my troubles the tunbridge wells um, fans so like the, you then i'm still friends I, in fact oh, I've, I've i've since gone back to, to tunbridge wells and coach for the oh for good the side of yeah I'm rugby's not like football in that way is it actually no, no, they're quite fact, they're a bit more civil tunbridge wells were were going through a bit of a, a slump uh, they, right. I'm sure they won't mind me. Uh, I, 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 I'm sure they won't mind me saying this. They've they've since gone um, you know, back up through the through the leagues, but Great. the local rivals, Tunbridge Juddians, came knocking one 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 summer in the off season and said, "Oh, how do you fancy coming coming over? Uh, we'll give you a bit of I say a bit of beer money." So uh, it was <laughs> nice. It was it was tempting. Um, so at, th- so th- at this stage, so if you just to put it in context, so you, you're finishing up uni, the drinking's taken off. You're, you're doing this like sort of on the side as mm. well. Sort of. At what point did it get to the point so where you, you you're thinking maybe this is maybe holding me back or it's causing me problems? So it was never my drinking was never a problem mm-hmm. in inverted commas mm-hmm. uh, because it was it was always problematic. Let's say mm-hmm. until um, I I injured myself quite quite severely. Um, I was very disciplined with my training. I mean, as I say, it wasn't you know playing playing full time or or anything I was working working a full time job wasn't wasn't playing playing rugby full time but took my training very seriously took my diet very seriously um, gym cardio etc etc all geared towards a rugby game of rugby on a saturday afternoon and then beers with the lads afterwards mm. um but I did this week in week out week in week out for for several years uh it wasn't until I actually moved over to, to Tunbridge Juddians and, and remember it vividly. The 9th of February 2013, hammered uh, sort of full full tongs into uh, into an opponent and just mistimed the tackle ever so slightly. So rather than hitting him with my shoulder, I just flew head first into his, into his midriff. And the collision compacted my neck severely. And uh, at the time I thought... That, that hurt. and I had uh, we call it a stinger. You get this sort of shooting pain down your down your arm, and you you trap a nerve. And I've still got a slightly numb sensation in my right thumb from from nerve damage. Anyway, wow. I sat up, so I obviously wasn't you know paralysed there and then. Fortunately, we'll come on to that. Yeah. Um, I sat up, and, and the physio came on and sort of carted me off and said, "Well, we'll, we'll put a bit of ice on it." Fifteen minutes later. I wanted to come back on the pitch. 
I was like, yeah, raring to go. Oh, yeah, this is brilliant. Oh, come on, come on, I'm fine, I'm fine, let me on. Um, fortunately, the, the physio had a little bit more sense than I did at the time and said, no, no, James, we'll sit the rest of the, uh, sit the, rest of the game out. We were winning. And they were, the team were perfectly capable of, of doing the final, final few moments of the game without me. Um, and I didn't really think much more of it. The next morning, I was stiff, neck was stiff, and, and I just put it down to the, the, the post-match bumps and bruises and scrapes I woke up every Sunday morning feeling A hung over and B like I'd been hit by a bus so I, I didn't think much more of it mm. so did you go out that night after <coughs> the Saturday game Saturday afterwards well? yeah I had a few beers afterwards right standard wow. yeah okay um, and that, that probably helped from a um, pain killing perspective mm. because 48 hours later on the Monday so I game on the Saturday afternoon on the Monday night I was lying in bed at so Tuesday morning it would have been 2 o'clock in the morning and it's hard to describe my entire body from head to toe was i was in absolutely agonizing pain i was just throbbing this sort of pulsing sensation going throughout my body um and it, as I say, it's hard to describe but i i knew from having had various breaks bumps bruises over the years that there was something wrong and I was lying in bed with my, my girlfriend at the time and I sat up and I sort of started putting my clothes on. So it was three o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> my ex gets up and I said, what, James, what on earth are you doing? I was like, I'm, I'm taking myself to hospital. And I, so I was you know, I was going to drive myself to, to hospital. Anyway, she uh, sort of begrudgingly agreed to, I said, don't, don't be silly, I'll, I'll take you. And uh, I wandered into the wandered into the hospital and the trouble was I was quite nonchalant about it I don't like making particular fuss about these things so I sort mm. of wandered into the hospital and said oh, I think I've <coughs> I think I've hurt my I think I've hurt myself rather than I'm, I'm in screaming pain from head to toe I thought, oh, yeah, I think right. so they sat me down gave me a couple of paracetamol and four hours later um, this one you know, obviously they forgot about me four hours later I was whisked through into the x-ray and then another couple of hours passed while they assessed it I had a CT scan in the, in the meantime um, which is, a, I don't know if anyone listening doesn't know, it's a slightly more detailed x-ray. Mm -hmm. um, and the CT scan showed a fracture to my to a vertebra in my neck. And you would not believe how quickly a hospital staff can transition from not giving a shit <laughs> to the entire hospital in meltdown. Was, oh my God, this guy has broken his neck. We need, so I had... Bear, as I say, bear in mind I was about 17 stone at the time I had six people carrying me around on a stretcher um, and was eventually they found a, a hospital bed um, and I was sellotaped to it for five days while they assessed whether or not I had a stable or instable fracture now bearing in mind I had as I say I'd walked around for two days walked into the hospital my head wasn't about to fall off but they needed to be certain of these things so um thank so you just to, the, to just uh, to get that clear mm. so <laughs> you play in a game you smash up your neck you come off the pitch you want to go back on the pitch they don't let you back on you then go to the pub you then get pissed you carry on with your life for a few days the next day you rock up I to had, the hospital the next day i had Sunday, like, day after the sunday i had my, my best friend came over for a sunday roast we went to the pub that sunday yeah. afternoon we were playing darts so you're full on walking so around I was, with I was a fractured around neck. for 48 hours right. with a broken neck wow have we got a photo of that? Can you get that photo up? So that's... Oh, yeah. so that's to say, sellotaped to so, so that <laughs> Bloody hell. So that was to prevent me moving my, my head left and right. Yeah. I was... And how long I was you completely like that? incapacitated like that for five days. Five days? Five days. Um, how was that, mate? Oh, I mean, geez. It was... Because all you've got is your thoughts. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Yeah, right. Uh, it was horrific. Mm. Um, and actually, at the time, the girlfriend at the time made this sort of... W cardboard contraption for me with a hole in it which sort of sat over my head like this so th and then I could rest an iPad yeah. in, the, in the hole so I was lying there like that with an iPad about six inches away from my face just, just watching crap for five days and yeah as you say you sort of sat there with your thoughts thinking well this fucking sucks yeah right and uh, what was going through your head? Oh, manner of different things. M mostly, well, this is this is rugby done, and that was the start of the the spiral. Mm. So I stuck. Uh, 
So I guess your identity as a man as being successful was, was purely yeah. wrapped up in being this tough identity rugby guy. Identity is a, yeah. a huge thing, and mm. yeah, I'm really keen to talk about this. Mm. Um, and a lot of I think m- a lot of mental health issues derive from a loss of a loss of identity or mm. not find not being able to find your identity. Mm. So very much so, and it, yes, it sounds perhaps a little bit lame now, but very much so my identity was that alpha male big rugby player mm. or oh, I'm a lad kind of bravado um, I'm able to drink more than everyone else mm. mentality um, but also that the camaraderie as I say of of rugby I say we talk about the bonds on and off the on and off the pitch that you you form with your your brothers in arms as a, as it were is, mm. is incredibly important and that 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 went in an instant um, so five days later, I was released from from the hospital with a, a carrier bag full of drugs, mm-hmm. morphine, and the rest. Actually, I had so I was I was on so many drugs that they had to give me a drug to stop the rest of the drugs corroding my stomach. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> right, so I was sort of dosed up on morphine for for three months. Quite how I'm not addicted to morphine, I don't know, <laughs> but Blimey. managed to avoid that one at least. Um, and I was packed off home. No, right, no, no, see you later. No, we'll, 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 we'll have a chat in a week or so, see how you're getting on. It's like, right, off you go. So did you have to have and like a <coughs> neck brace or? So I wore that, <coughs> that neck brace 24 hours a day for three months. Oh and it was the gosh. most uncomfortable thing I can, de- I can't describe it to you. Slept in it for everything. Wow. Um, I had to shower in it, the works, right? So and that is <coughs> almost like a constant reminder oh, yeah, of yeah, what yeah. happened isn't it yeah, every yeah, yeah. day you're sort of you, you eating can't away at it, you. Yeah. you can't yeah 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 it's like i wasn't yeah. allowed to take it off to to stretch my neck or or, yeah. or you know get some relief from it it was three eight three months Boom. yeah and i had to take those three months off work couldn't commute backwards and forwards to london for i mean the, the trouble the thing was i was in my mind i was fine mm. now I, as i say walked around for two days afterwards i would have happily gone off to work but no, the consultant that I saw, no, you're, you're staying at home. You're, you're basically not moving for yeah. three months. Yeah, and it wasn't his fault, but that sent me on this this journey of depression. Call call it what you want. You yeah, know, right. uh, frustration, <clears throat> anger, the rest of it, and and ultimately boredom. Yeah, it's, five days was bad enough three months of, of this and, and there are only so many episodes of Friends that you can watch on repeat on, yeah, on Dave yeah. as I think it was back then or Top yeah. Gear or whatever is on yeah um, that the boredom and, and my girlfriend obviously at the time was, was off to work so I was at home uh, alone from 9 or 8.30 till 5.30 in the afternoon mm. so just to put that <laughs> into context so you'd played rugby as a kid from what age? Six from six, eight, something and like that. Yeah. When were you? When you had that injury? I was twenty-eight when so I injured myself. So, so all twenty years, years or so, every yeah. week training, and then a match on a Saturday, and then now it's like boom, yeah, nothing. And it, and it and it <coughs> again. I mean, it's, it's a slightly slightly aside topic, but as as human beings, we need routine. Yeah. We like to think we're creatures of habit. Mm. Uh, sorry, we like to think we're we're spontaneous and mm. and and we mm. can do things off the cuff. We, we can but when it comes when it boils down to it we are creatures of habit mm. and that I mean, obviously not as a six-year-old but very much as a an 18 to, to 28 year old mm-hmm. that routine gave me that the, the rugby the discipline that gave me my routine mm, that structure it, it gave me structure absolutely mm. so it was you know a specific training whether it's I don't know, cardio on a monday team training on a tuesday mm you get the picture throughout the week eating mm. the right things you know that that rugby is in the back of my head i must be fit for mm. must be healthy for rugby um and actually that leads on to another element of my mindset yeah and that i i need something to to focus on in the future yeah or i need a goal in order to motivate myself mm-hmm. so when i was playing rugby it was always i must be as you know the, the fittest i can be for rugby i must yeah. be the best in my position in the league or whatever it is you know compared to opponents and, and that gave me the drive mm-hmm. to go to the gym to eat right and again when that was taken away i had nothing to nothing to motivate myself nothing to focus on yeah 
So I add all of these elements together and um, the boredom, the frustration, the lack of routine, the lack of discipline, the lack of structure. Mm -hmm. And I found myself fairly early on in this process, one afternoon nipping to the fridge and thinking, oh, I'll just get a snack. And oh, there was a little you know, cold can of beer there and it was very tempting and a glistening little, mm. little bit of condensation. <laughs> oh, oh, go on then. So yeah. I you know, treated myself to a beer one afternoon, thinking nothing nothing more of it. <clears throat> the next day it was two. The next day it was three. You see where I'm going with this. Yeah, right. Um, and it, I say that, it wasn't a daily progression. It was a week by, you know, week. It's, it's a long, drawn-out thing. Mm. But after three months of this, I was putting away, you know, we're talking bottles of spirits uh, each day. Wow. Um, and that's that was that was the start of the the spiral. Mm. Now I went back off to work after the the three months and it and it and curbed it to to an extent, but I suppose that um, that spark yeah had been had been lit yeah. And again, add that to my mindset of, of the, the the lack of off switch, mm -hmm. um, and over the course of it was three years um from when i broke my neck to when i finally gave up drinking over those three years you um you can imagine the the, the spiral yeah of course to the point where um i was i was living in london and uh i went out for <coughs> went out for drinks with work colleagues mm -hmm. one one evening uh, i was living with a, a another ex-girlfriend i've had a couple of them leave me for uh these problems anyway yeah, yeah. so another story um and i came home and for some i can't remember why but we had a, a, a raging argument about something mm -hmm. uh and this is i say after you know, three four or five pints whatever it is and with with work colleagues i came home had the best part of a, a bottle of wine on my mm -hmm. own right had this raging argument and then something something flicked in my in my brain i stormed out of the flat with a bottle of jack daniels checked myself into a hotel and drank the whole thing and it again it goes to show big guy how much i could put yeah. away mm. and it's scary in, in hindsight mm. you know the blackouts and the the amount of life that mm. is lost yeah as a result of alcohol and drugs or whatever or whatever your your mm. vice is mm. um these these periods of time you know, i woke up the next morning and I was having uh, breakfast in the, mm -hmm. in the hotel, uh, treating myself to a you know, full English kind of thing. And I, I don't necessarily believe in divine intervention and, and that, that sort of stuff, but I had what I can only describe as an outer body experience mm -hmm. in that I, I sort of you know, drifted out of myself and looked down at this, this pathetic individual who was struggling to eat a plate of sausages and baked beans because he felt so awful from the night the night before and something something clicked I, thought, I can't do this I can't do this ever again mm. um, I can't feel like this I can't put myself through this I can't subject myself to this anymore um, and it, it was that light bulb that light bulb moment of and and again it's all relative but that was my that was my rock bottom wow that's amazing so um, just so I can understand so after the injury, I guess they said no rugby. Yeah, no rugby. So I I saw a cons after the three months of uh, being in the neck brace, I went back to the consultants and the, the neck brace came off and oh, this sense of relief. And I said, right, when can I play rugby again? And he sort of looked at me and he just shook his head and you know the finger came out. James, I think we need to call it a day on the rugby front. Oh, um, so then that so would have fed into so all of this. Then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So again, the, the loss of the identity. Uh, who who of am I exactly now without yeah. that? And I mean, his his rationale, and it's it was fairly reasonable in in hindsight. Mm. His rationale was that I I'd, I'd almost paralysed myself first time round. I'm, I'd compacted my neck so badly that my um, one of the discs in my spine mm. was was pressing up against my spinal cord. Wow. So if it had been any worse, I, I wouldn't wouldn't have walked again. Unbelievable. And he, he said basically, wow. if, you, if you do that, if you do the same thing, you, you, you won't walk again. Right. 
so it's, it's kind of a bit you know a kick in the uh, in the reality yeah. uh, spectrum uh, yeah um, of course so, so you yeah, have that and then you have a couple of failed relationships you're tricking along at work and then it's this moment in this hotel restaurant i guess mm. where it's like i don't i don't want this exactly it's i've, I've had enough I've you know, had i can't enough, yeah, i can't, can't do I can't this do to this. myself anymore yeah um, and and everyone who has had that that moment of clarity has yeah. had it in different ways mm. um mine was eating a fry up <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah anyway. but it doesn't matter does uh, it it, doesn't, like it happen, so, can happen anywhere no. so, so that take was march 2016 right okay um, so that's you um, haven't had a drink since I haven't then drunk since then wow i mean that's incredible oh, thank you so take me back to that to that morning you've made you've had this revelation mm. what did you do next because this is the gold for people yeah. listening is like okay i can relate to what james has gone through you know how did he do it because mm, that's sure. what i think people want to know what did yeah. you do day one yeah it's i mean it's 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 fascinating how the mind can can be programmed i suppose into mm achieving whatever it is we we want to achieve whether mm. it's you know, running a marathon which i'm doing now or or getting sober or you know, getting a new job or you know buying a house it, it it's incredible in that i something as i say something switched mm -hmm. in my brain and i i then it sounds a bit corny but i then i basically became addicted to being sober <laughs> wow that's awesome um and i went to I went to the, the program, I went to meetings, I went to seminars, I had had hypnotherapy, I read literature, uh, poured through literature on addiction. Mm. Um, and I just immersed myself in this this understanding of, of how to not drink. Yeah. So I sort of trained, my like I had trained myself in the discipline of eating healthily and getting fit for rugby, mm -hmm. I trained myself in the discipline of, of not drinking. Mm. Um, and a major, major step of that was telling my friends. Obviously, yeah. you know that's it's, it's I say twenty years or so of, of n not of drinking, but playing playing rugby and being mm. part of that that pack. Yeah, and being quite Coming, an alpha male and, in that and pack. being the yeah, yeah. you know the, You're a big the, yeah, exactly guy. the alpha. Um, yeah. A big transition was coming 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 clean um mm. but yeah coming <laughs> not coming out um yeah. but coming forward let's let's use that yeah. uh, and uh, how was uh, that how was that like was all the friends quite they supportive were, they were amazing of it? well they i say they were amazing they were amazing in their own way like yeah. rugby is is there's so much banter involved in rugby yeah like, they were very very supportive and welcoming of of the fact that i was not drinking but yeah. there were i got a lot of stick for it Gwynny was my, was my nickname yeah oh Gwynny's off the wagon yeah and there's <laughs> so, so, so many jokes and you know so they try and jokingly sort of tempt me and, yeah. and I, you know they would never have allowed me to actually yeah uh, have had a drink but yeah like, oh, go on you know you just have one <laughs> kind of there was all these sort of yeah. snide jokey because i guess for them they might have but thought, it was all this is just a he's just had a bad thing and he's probably going to drink again in a little while maybe i don't know i mean because i was i i realized quite early on in the process that being as open as possible about it mm -hmm. was the biggest um uh, aid yeah. in, in 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 sort of pulling yourself through a process like this yeah. and it's a piece of advice i would give to anyone who is perhaps struggling or considering is is be open you yeah. know there's no point telling yourself that you are doing dry, dry january or something whatever it is there's yeah. no point saying to yourself oh i'll i, I i'm not drinking because or, sorry i'm sort of waffling a bit but you know, in a social setting perhaps yeah there's no point saying to other people oh, i'm i'm on antibiotics or yeah. you know coming up with excuses as to why yeah. you don't drink yeah just be open and honest you, about you've it you've just got to be completely open and say i i don't drink yeah. Full, full stop and let the chips and fall where they may if, if someone wants to a lot of people will accept that mm -hmm. and they'll move on and you know it'll be, that'll be the end of it some people will say why ask why and and again if, yeah, it's there's no point beating about the bush and coming up with excuses or lying about it oh, you know, I've, I've had a drinking problem in the past whatever it is um, saying it straight because ultimately if you're lying and not being honest with other people mm -hmm. you're lying and not being honest to yourself yeah right. which is which is <coughs> the, that's the what really matters part. isn't it exactly yeah, yeah. so i was very open so i talked to them about my um 
because th- they didn't know that I'd been doing this at home and and on my own, and and mm-hmm. they were very understanding of the of the situation. So I, ex- I, I accepted it with with no problem, albeit with a bit of oh, a bit of a bit, bit of banter, of, a bit of stick and banter <laughs> in the uh, in the process. That's yeah. awesome, mate. Well, well done, mate. Thank you. So let's let's talk about SAS Who Dares Wins. I yeah, think we've got a picture of, means. of you on here. So. What was obviously that's where we met yes, and we indeed. you know created this bond Santiago between us Airport, in, it was, in Santiago it? Airport you'd about lost a year your ago. Yeah, 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 yeah I'd yeah. lost my luggage uh, that had gone missing along with my boots, <laughs> <laughs> and they was offered was, me your was, boots, was, size was, thirteen. Yes, so I was listening I was to like, your no thanks. your um, your change as possible. Um, Summary of your Summary experience. Of the experience you had yeah. the choice of my boots or Sam's boots. Or Sam's didn't you? boots. Like, oh, yeah. Shall I go two sizes too big or shall I go one size too small? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't fancy you like clumping yeah, around like in a clown. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll probably be falling yeah. all over the place, I'll be tripping over. Yeah. 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 So you know you done you done well on there. You got Thank to you. the final eight, didn't That's you? That's right. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So what was your re- talk us so through like your reason for for applying? I mean, sure. obviously. We've got some context of it now. Mm. We get your whole story and mm. it's motivational, but mm. was there any other reason why you applied? So, I mean, this is the the journey. There's a lovely, mm. fluffy word that we, we use when we talk about the uh, the, the path that we've, that we've gone down. Mm-hmm. Um, I, as part of my recovery, mm-hmm. um, found that exercise was, was, was what enabled me to mm. um, move forward yeah, you know, that gave me that motivation. It gave me that gave, gave me that focus. So I, I as, as I say, I did the AA for mm-hmm. on and off. I wasn't probably as religious as I shouldn't should have been, but mm-hmm. I, I, I sort of dabbled with it. Um, but I, I ultimately came to the conclusion that, and and you know, I, I don't want people to get me wrong here because the AA is a phenomenal program. It's mm-hmm. helped millions of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. But yeah. for me, I I just I came to the conclusion that I was I preferred spending an hour going out for a run than than spending an hour going going to a meeting it, that, mm-hmm. you know that run that that clarity that the ability to just sort of switch off mm-hmm. that's my mindfulness that's mm. my that's your therapy meditation and yeah. and uh, you know you obviously you know uh very, very well about this the, mm. the 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 steps you know mm-hmm. one of the first one is the higher power isn't mm. it yeah um giving yourself over to a to a higher power mm-hmm. uh, was it first or second no, that, that's third um, step yeah third step sorry. yeah First step is um, accepting. Re- accepting it, right? <clears throat> so you accept it, and mm. then you 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 find your your higher power. Mm. And for me, that exercise was was, was my higher power. Mm-hmm. It gives me that 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 drive. Yeah. Um, but as I said earlier, the I need that that goal, that yeah. thing to work towards in in the future. Okay, so yeah. I set myself uh, shortly after I I stopped drinking. I watched the London Marathon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a Sunday morning, and I was sat there with my with my dad and flicking flicking through the channels and, and the marathon came on right and i had this just this overwhelming sense of of inspiration like this this is incredible mm. i must do this <laughs> right awesome and so the next day i got in touch with a, a, a rugby charity mm-hmm. uh, that i've worked with in the past a charity called wooden spoon and i said i want to do the, mar- the marathon next year mm-hmm. and they had a number of places i got their first their first charity spot that's awesome. And I gave myself that that goal mm-hmm. uh, to work towards, you know, a year in advance. Yeah. I, I now 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 know that I will be running the London Marathon. Yeah. In 2017, it was. Um, and I set myself this goal, and I set myself a time to do it in, and there's various sort of targets to to look to to work towards, and you know, you break down that that you have you, you set yourself an overarching goal and you break mm-hmm. that down into you mm-hmm. know so you're running 5k in the first week and 10k in the first month etc etc mm-hmm. et and you um it's a very good way of giving yourself mm. that discipline back so that, that was 2017 so london I, marathon i i ran it 2017 yeah great how did you get on uh so the goal was to do sub four hours yeah uh, just snuck in three hours 56 amazing well uh, done mate. thank you um and i was i, I was really, I was running down. I can remember running down the uh, uh, the embankment towards Parliament, and was overtaken by a Macmillan coffee mug, and then a guy in a <laughs> then a guy in a suit, a full suit. <laughs> yeah, so think this. You know, oh God, right? Yeah. But, full credit um, to people. But then I managed to uh, managed to beat a guy in a full dinosaur outfit by two minutes. So I was I was <laughs> I was chuffed with that. Job done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, but, but again, the addictive person. I just have an addictive personality. Mm. Um, so you finish your marathon so and you want the next thing. 
well, what's next? Right. You know, and I so combine combine that with having had this this injury, uh, having you know done that to to my my body. I'm fascinated mm-hmm. by, on the one hand, how <coughs> fragile the body, human mm-hmm. body, can be, mm-hmm. uh, but on the other hand, how when you push it, it can achieve these incredible things. So mm. whether it's running a marathon or running an ultra marathon or mm. climbing Everest or swimming the channel or mm. there, you know, human beings have achieved these phenomenal mm. feats throughout, throughout history. So I'm fascinated by the concept of finding out what my own mm-hmm. capabilities are, what my own limits are. Mm-hmm. So I've set myself accordingly a number of challenges so the marathon being being one and obviously the marathon is a um worldwide concept of achievement mm-hmm. but i uh, yeah, see as, as we just said i then mm-hmm. think to myself all right what do i do now mm. um and that's where sas came and in. sas came into that mm-hmm. um albeit obviously on a whim because five thousand people applied and you never mm-hmm. think you're going to get a chance do mm-hmm. you um and you're not told until two weeks beforehand that you're actually mm. on it and they if lead you, you down this gu- exactly <laughs> and you, they lead you down this um this garden path of x in one, one interview then another interview oh you've made it through to the next stage oh you made it through to the next stage it, and then you yeah. do your test yeah, yeah. your psych test and they make sure you're not completely crazy which <laughs> which we all are to an extent so <laughs> exactly. uh, it kind of defeats the point doesn't it but anyway we're all nuts yeah um, we are actually, you know yeah. the rest of, we've all done this thing and we're all now running through deserts and you know doing <laughs> exactly. stupid things afterwards yeah, yeah. And, um so yeah we're all we're all mad but anyway um you eventually get told and off you go and mm. so that was i was very we were very fortunate in mm-hmm. in our in in that that allowed me to uh, that i was able to build that into my mm. journey there's the word again um yeah. of self discovery you mm. know finding my finding my limits mm. So it was um, a challenge you set yourself is like another thing to focus on, another thing to work towards. Exactly, which yeah, is all good. Yeah, Keeps yeah. you motivated. It gave me a lot of. I I I trained rigorously. For yeah, I, I got myself very fit. Yeah, I mean, you could um, tell when we was out there. You was you know up there physically. Thank you. With yeah. the, with, with the strongest, and you was a great person in the group. You always kept the fire going. Yeah, and, the fire you know, kept God, the spirits going. About that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the fire was, I mean, I if you the, could, if you I think could, the fire came from just the fact that I didn't sleep for twelve hours. <laughs> So I might as well get up and like you know <laughs> stick stick another going. log on. Um, yeah. You uh, again listen to your you know your your um, insights into this in in the previous previous podcast and you're just wired. Yeah. For twelve twelve days. Yeah. Um, you can't sleep. You know, yeah. You're worried that they're going to burst through the door at any moment. You, mm. The lights go out at ten o'clock in the accommodation and eleven o'clock they all come back on again and you're beasted around the parade square for an mm. hour. Yeah back in and you know it's 12 o'clock then you've got to do night shift at two from <laughs> two till three and then you go back to bed you know, and then five o'clock the lights come on and you're beasted around the parade square again yeah. just, and it, you know relentless Savage. yeah brutal beastings um you got the uh, nickname out there from Ant middleton of the nickname of rupert and right. i've got to say yeah. like amongst us fellow contestants we all thought you handled that extremely well i, t- I took know. it as a compliment yeah, oh, yeah. I'm I was quite like, happy to be yeah, there. Full respect thanks, to James thanks, for that. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it can be sort of it's, it's put it's across as if it was like like a negative thing. It's but slightly derogatory. Yeah, yeah, it's a no, shame. I just really, take it on the I take it on the chin. I mean, I'm fine with it. What yeah. made me laugh watching the show back is that you know I was given a bit of a hard time by Billy and and yeah. an aunt in in that interview, and you know managed to keep. Me. I think they were trying to rile me, trying mm. to get me upset, and I. I I kept it together. I've no, no problem. Right, you can give me as you know, much stick as you like. I'm, I'm not going to launch myself across the table and you know try and attack you, am I? Yeah. Um, but then as soon as I walked out of the room, Billy turned to Anne and said, "I like him. He's a good guy." Yeah. So you know, it's all for, for yeah, TV, that's good. Isn't it? But I'm, I was quite happy to be the. I, li- I particularly liked a comment that Foxy made in that they were they were sort of discussing us final eight recruits, and uh, <coughs> he said. Uh, yeah, um, um, he'd, pr- he'd probably be in the you know back at the the, the command base giving out the orders. So, <laughs> it's not a bad quite, compliment, quite is it? That, you know, officer material supposedly. I think one of the, lovely, w- so. one of the big moments everyone remembers from that show with you is that moment with Rick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When it, you know you had the rope and you he let you down the rope and then you hit the rock That's and right. 
you know, I think offer it'd be good for everyone to offer some insight into that because sure. my, my understanding was it, it was a little bit different to how it was seen on the telly. It, it was. Now, um, yes, it, I mean, one, on one hand, it bloody hurt. I was <laughs> dropped 50 feet onto a rock. But yeah, on the other hand, sore. on the other hand, I was I was OK. Yeah. Right? I mean, it looked the, the sort of cinematography and things like mm. that, it made it look a lot worse mm. um that said my sort of leg seized up and we had to do this ridiculous trek up a hill the next day so <laughs> i was sort of hobbling on one leg up with a you know 30 kg bergen on and, and yeah sort of struggling to keep up anyway yeah um but again rick, you handled it so well you came up you gave rick a cuddle oh, like rick you know rick bless him took you could, it you so could, he took it so hard he, he did you could see he was beating himself up and it it wasn't his fault to the full extent that it was made out. The, mm. the thing was rigged incorrectly. If you watched the the, the celebrities did, um, the celebrity show was was on air after we did ours, mm -hmm. and I watched it looking specifically at the position of the rope, right. and they had rigged it three three meters further out from the rocks for the celebrities oh, than they had us, right? Okay, so. I wonder if there was an element of we'll try and get something on, you know, tell a story it's, it's on good, television. Good entertainment, and, you know, isn't it? It was good entertainment. <laughs> there was a few decisions like that. Billy that called it a little bit late and it wasn't rigged properly and Ant made a bit of a fuss of it. He dropped the C-bomb and, you know, this <laughs> so it was, you know, Rick took it, bless him, so bad, so hard. You saw that on Rick and I, I, and I, there was I really no felt point, for him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there was no point me doing the same effing and blinding and making we, we were oppos at the you mm. know we'd been selected together and you and Rick were close weren't we, you we got on incredibly you, you, you well were, yeah, yeah. yeah you were we, a few we, beds we laughed, away weren't that's you? right yeah we, we laughed and joked throughout we had uh, we had this on, on it's a shame it didn't come out on the television but uh it was edited out. We had this ongoing joke about yaks for some reason, <laughs> yeah. being being feral animals. That's what we, we were. We called. were team yak. Yeah, I don't team know why yak. that didn't that was come out because it was that was, yeah, yeah. that was gold <laughs> Co content. That gold. That was our name on the Born Indeed. Survivor Indeed. event. Indeed. Team yes. yak. Team, hashtag team yak. <laughs> um, so no, we got we got on very well. Yeah, and good. So rather than just saying rather than saying to him, you, you know, you idiot, what, what have you done? I just gave him a hug and said, look, it's fine. Yeah, because because it, it was. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it could have been a lot worse, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. And then I was interviewed later on by Foxy and Nolly, and they said, "What well, you know, what happened? What did you think about that?" Okay, these these things these things happen. Mistakes are made. Mm. He didn't do it intentionally. Yeah. Um. So we move on. Yeah. We move on with our lives. And that's what no that, no that, harm no foul as yeah. it were. It's so. great. And that's what I love about you, James, mate. You're just such a good guy. So for everyone watching now what are you doing now because i know you're 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 you're, you're, you're you're doing a few other things i know you've got an, a couple of fitness events coming up so just give, us, right. give us an update so on where you're at and you know where everyone can yeah, find you as well sure. so i um off the back of sas um i did some publicity for a company called life insurance um uh, sorry life search they're a life insurance company and as a thank you they they've uh, they offered to pay for entry into my next crazy challenge um and last summer i did a, a 100 kilometer ultra marathon the next is a 100 mile oh the grimaces uh, ultra marathon how long um, is that over is if you got that this? will i hope take 20 hours i want to do it in 20 hours um, if I do anything under 24, I'll be I'll be happy. Apparently, you get a be you get a belt buckle saying 100 miles in a day if you do it in under 24 hours. So that'll be the the the, wow. the back. When is that? That's May next right, year. Okay. So, you've got so a bit it's of time called to the, the Thames Path 100, wow. running from London to Oxford along the Thames. Which right. Would be that's nice. Quite scenic. Quite nice. Yeah. So that's the the next big uh, challenge physically mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, so I did a long one last year, and it was. Oh, it was incredible! Such a great event. It, people sort of see running as quite a solitary um, uh, sort of pastime, mm -hmm. but when you come to the actual events themselves, mm -hmm. like running the marathon, you've got obviously running marathon is slightly different because you've got tens of thousands of people and everyone's in fancy dress and it's it's, it's very much a sort of festival atmosphere mm -hmm. but even when there's 500 of you doing an, a, a, an event over 70 miles you talk to people you get mm. to know people you mm. find out people's stories you help each other out you give each other sweets you, yeah. you help each other you fill your bottles and all that sort of stuff it's, it's great it's, isn't it it's lovely and yeah. it's this sort of community so mm. it comes a bit back to, to my my rugby mm. kind of you know That's your thought, thought process it's yeah. that being part of something mm. um so yeah but that i managed to achieve managed to 
complete just about complete the um the 70 miler in daylight mm -hmm. whereas the the 100 miler will be through the night and wow. that will be uh mentally as obviously well as well as physically mental side will be tough yeah um but it comes back to the sas thought process and especially the way that the special forces operatives um conduct themselves and they have this um understanding for want of a better word that once your you, you, your your mind gives out before your body mm. um when you think you're when you think you're done you've actually got a third left in the tank mm. it's a case of flicking that switch in the brain and saying yeah. one foot in front of the other yeah and it's a case of you know discipline as well and understanding your body's needs from a fuel perspective the right mm. amount of carbs the right mm. amount of sugar the right amount of liquid etc so mm. um it's a good exercise in understanding your body and as i say come back to that that um interest in my own limits and mm -hmm. capabilities yeah um so that's sort of <coughs> physical um side um from a career um side uh, uh, of things the relating to the, the the fitness relating to the mental health relating to the uh, we talked about and this is where i come back to talking about success mm -hmm. uh, the perception of success mm -hmm. um that we are guided through get a good you know go to get good grades go to a good university get a good job buy a house buy a car we're we're sort of driven by society mm -hmm. um and the number of people out there that get to 35 years old and they've got a good house and they've got a good car and they're married with kids and they think that well, shit what do i do now yeah and they've got 65 years of their life mm. to work that out yeah i so was one of them people <laughs> i was too yeah um and i i now believe that i have found that purpose mm. of helping other people mm. find their purpose mm through my own through my own experiences yeah great. so i am looking at a a well wellness escape mm -hmm. concept designed around giving people um that uh, understanding of of what they want in order mm -hmm. to feel like they have been successful rather yeah. than what society wants yeah um and the the concept of this, this sort of the retreat the wellness retreat mm -hmm. Is a is a is a very common one. But my my take on it is that you know, a group of twenty people who go to Ibiza for the week and all do a yoga class together and all do meditation together and they mm -hmm. eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they sort of go through this fairly regimented boot camp style mm -hmm. few mm -hmm. days doesn't necessarily fulfil what is an incredibly personalised thing: mental health, mm -hmm. wellness, success. Mm -hmm. They are all very very it's all very different according to the individual everyone yeah, right. has their own concept of what that entails mm. so i am i'm looking to do a more personalized offering um consultations in advance uh with a raft of nutritionists pts osteopaths physios sleep mm -hmm. coaches life coaches wow. you, you, you name it it sounds really um, exciting giving people the that one-on-one -on -one tuition where perhaps they've mm. lost their way or not yet found their way yeah great um burnout is mm -hmm. a is now a, a, a medical syndrome recognized mm -hmm. by the world health organization you know, yeah. high, you know, high flying ceos who are yeah. stressed beyond belief and and not perhaps managing the yeah. you know, sort of personal side of their lives as they could be not yeah. eating the right things not exercising them because they're so focused on mm. well i on read that yeah. success uh, yeah i read yeah. an interesting article about that but the amount of suicides in in yeah. highly successful wealthy still the highest owners. killer of men between um yeah. 25 and 45 yeah. i think so i think uh, it's a great cause so if so if, if we want to find out more info about that sure should we just yeah. get, so get people to follow you on websites, your socials uh, website's up and running it's um just i say in the in the um initial phases at the moment but mm -hmm. reconnectescapes.com Great, awesome. Uh, we'll, at, put a, we'll put a link to that, that up, on the, uh, up on Thank the screen. At, and at Reconnect Escapes on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, um, looking to uh, build build that out over the over the coming weeks and weeks and months. Great, mate. Yeah. Well, listen, mate. I'm something I, I I'll be quite interested in myself, to be honest Wonderful. with you. Yeah. So yeah, come along. So if anyone listening today heard anything, I think a lot of people will relate, especially people who are rugby in the rugby world. 
how can they connect with you like can they connect with you on on instagram I'm, or facebook yeah, or? more than happy to chat to anyone on on instagram uh, as i say um at, well as, as, as the, um, the, the company uh, handle my own personal one is at james gwinnett mm-hmm. very very simple great um more than happy to chat to anyone more than happy to offer support offer advice where i can mm-hmm. uh, as i say that Advice is obviously very personal to it to each individual. So, yeah, uh, but but where, where I can help, I, I will do. That's great. And yeah, I'd love people to sort of share their own experiences mm-hmm. with me, and as sort I of say, you know where they've come mm-hmm. uh, on that on their own journeys. Yeah, know? great, great. So just before we wrap it up, one more question: um, When it's all said and done, what will they say about James Gwinnett? Ooh. God, you put me on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> um. I would like to be as I mean as I say I think people go through life without without a purpose mm. uh without having achieved some something uh and they get to their deathbed and and you know they've they've had a good job and they've they've had a good car and they've had a good house so what you know what does that mean I want people to see see me as having pushed myself both in a mental and physical capacity to mm. my my limits whether that's by going on a crazy tv show or running a an ultra marathon um at the same time as having actually made a difference in terms of people's mental health and, mm-hmm. and well-being through yeah. through sharing my experiences mm-hmm. and, and giving people strength and hope um for their own their own circumstances mate i love that thanks for coming on mate my absolute pleasure Thank nice you. one buddy it's been great to chat yeah nice one bro